the the 28 gang which Ralph Stanfield is alleged to be the leader of is probably um, by far the strongest and most feared organized crime gang in South Africa. Every time they talk about him, from journalists, media personnel, or everyday people on the streets, there's always a similar tone or theme that follows his name. The most dangerous, the most feared, most ruthless. He's accused of many things, but never convicted of any. Ralph Stanfield is a controversial businessman from Cape Town. He's been on the news lately for all the wrong reasons. From his involvement with the closure of the late DJ Somebody's Ayepyeb Lounge in Cape Town, to the housing tender controversy in Valhalla Park in the Cape Flats, and the most recent case where he was denied bail. He's charged with the motor vehicle theft, assault, attempted murder, robbery and fraud. Now in this video, we'll be looking at the alleged criminal life of the most dangerous shot caller in the country. In, you know, in gang cases, especially when they are very senior um, underworld figures, and I mean, you can, you can go and look at everything from like um, Radovan Kretscher to Mark Lifman to Donkey Boyson, uh, Nafiz Modak, any of these big cases, there's, there's always uh, you know, a lot of media attention. In this case, the court granted um, applications to take pictures of the accused in court. Um, and despite that, not a single person took out their phone or took mm. out a camera to take pictures. Uh, and it is, it is because of, of Ralph Stanfield, the, the fear he commands uh, in, in South Africa, in the city of Cape Town. In 2014, Ralph Stanfield and his crew, along with three family members, were arrested as part of an illegal gun licensing syndicate. Now, the police were accused of helping gang bosses and their family members obtain gun licenses in a corrupt manner. Now, three former police officers who were based at the Central Firearms Registry in Pretoria were suspected of destroying documents relating to firearms and documents focusing on Stanfield. Now, the case went on for some years in court, but over time, they were acquitted of all charges relating to fraud, corruption, possession of unlicensed firearms, and the contravention of the Firearms Act. Now, Stanfield has continued to deny any gang involvement and claims to be a well-established businessman, but media sources, they claim that Stanfield has been involved in criminal activities for many years and he has faced charges of drug dealing, arson and attempted murder in the past. You've also spoken in your article about security for gun licenses where the gangsters allegedly go as far as the private security industry. What is the threat there? So in terms of private security companies, I wrote a book called The Enforcers Inside Cape Town's Deadly Nightclub Battles. That was around 2018, 2019. And what we've seen is, um, and police have made these allegations in courts, it's not just coming from me, is that we've got crime suspects who use other people to start security companies. They then apply to police to get firearm licenses and they get the firearm licenses, they get hold of the firearms, but then they do not use those guns for security purposes. They use them to commit crimes. And that is a concern in the Western Cape. And we, we should be hearing more about allegations in that realm early next year when Nafiz Modak, an organized crime accused, goes on trial or is set to go on trial. In July 2017, Stanfield was shot in his Audi R8 near Melrose Arch, Job. He then drove himself to the nearest hospital but lost control when he arrived and hit three cars. Now reports say he had a bulletproof vest on at the time and that kinda saved him. Now Ralph was shot several times in the upper body in that drive-by shooting. It never came out who did it but the streets are always talking. Now some speculations were a faction under another controversial businessman Nafiz Modak was believed to be trying to take control of the city from a more established grouping linked to other kingpins in the Western Cape. Now with the war that was happening at the time, some suspect that Ralph could have been targeted because of it. He was badly injured but he survived. On the 7th of November 2016, attorney Noradin Hassan 
was shot at in front of his Lansdowne home while sitting in his car. The police never found out who did it. And also in October 2018, advocate Pete Mahalik was shot dead just outside the school where he was dropping off his children in Greenpoint. Now both lawyers had represented Stanfield in the past. Now Stanfield was a pallbearer at Pete Mahalik's funeral. Now Ralph allegedly comes from a crime family. His uncle was an OG of the Cape Flats, Colin Stanfield. He was an alleged drug lord and involved in the underworld. Now Colin was imprisoned for tax evasion in 2002 and died of cancer in 2004. He was sentenced to six years imprisonment after the Cape High Court found him guilty of tax evasion to the tune of 5 million rands, but he was never found guilty of dealing in dope. You see, Colin Stanfield had a large group of supporters and was considered by the community as a philanthropist of some sort in Valhalla Park. And some say he was supporting the community financially as well. A brazen business robbery or an act of extortion which has been plaguing the city lately. Authorities in Cape Town believe that there may be more to the incident than meets the eye. It had been suggested and confirmed by people who understand a bit about what's happening that it is most likely related to the extortion rackets, to extortion figures that are now prominent and well known uh, to the public um, and that the, uh, the incident uh, was an attempt to as a, serve either as a warning or to extort money from a person in lieu of protection. It's understood that computers were also stolen from the premises while staff were being assaulted and robbed. Now another one is Ralph's cousin, who was also a big stepper, Simon Stanfield. You see, among other things, he was charged with two counts of attempted robbery and malicious damage to property for the incident at the toy shop in Milnatin. Now this incident happened on the 17th of Feb 2021, where we saw a group of about 40 men enter a dealership and smash the windows of several sports cars. Now police sources say the group demanded two cars from the staff claiming the dealership was not under protection of the big boss of the Western Cape. Now Simon was murdered in an apparent hit in Delft. According to a source, he was shot multiple times by two gunmen who cornered him. Now the gunmen were in a white Ford icon and fired over 20 shots at him and he was declared dead on the scene. Now another big stepper is Salim John, also cousin to Ralph Stanfield and suspected leader of the 28th gang. He was sentenced to life imprisonment along with six co-accused in the Western Cape High Court. Now his charges include murder, dealing in drugs, malicious damage to property, attempted murder, illegal gang activity and the possession of unlicensed firearms and ammunition and also charges under the Prevention of Organized Crime Act for gang related incidents in Valhalla Park. Police are appealing for witnesses to come forward after a man was gunned down in front of the Western Cape High Court on Tuesday. The 35-year-old was shot in the neck as he was leaving to buy lunch shortly before midday. The victim had been attending a double murder case in which his cousin is one of the accused. A gun was found next to a rubbish bin 30 meters from the crime scene. Five gang members are on trial for the murder of 14-year-old Cameron Fernanda and his female friend two years ago. Police said they would investigate whether Tuesday's shooting was gang related. Now, in December 2023, another family member of Ralph was murdered in broad daylight outside his Valhalla Park home. Now, Noor was the cousin of Ralph and the son of Colin Stanfield. Now, next to Ralph, he was the most high ranking member of the gang. The killing of Noor came just a week after Ralph and his wife were denied bail in the Cape Town Magistrate Court. Glomex House Brokers is a construction company that is owned by Ralph Stanfield's wife. Now they won a tender to build about 204 houses in Valhalla Park. 
This is after a previous contractor quit the job in 2019. You see, residents in Valhalla Park reportedly complained that the housing project was halted when a previous contractor was forced to pay protection fees to the 28. Now, other construction mafia crimes, including shootings, intimidations, have been happening since then. Now, it is also alleged that two City of Cape Town officials said Glomix plus 15 other companies linked to Stanfield managed to infiltrate the provincial and local government through corruption and deception. Now, Stanfield and his wife have not been criminally charged over the glow mix matter. The Sunday Times reporting at the weekend that associates of Cape Town gang boss, or alleged Cape Town gang boss, Ralph Stanfield, reportedly entering a mayoral office complex in February demanding that they be given access to housing development contracts we've had for the longest time have had issues with extortion rackets organized crime wanting to sink their teeth into building development projects in the city of cape town not just here but across the country and if you're not familiar with the name of ralph stanfield if you only ever heard the name fleetingly during news bullets it's been more than a decade since the Valhalla Park housing project was started. Over 780 beneficiaries were to get homes, but continuous and non-stop violence against contractors, threats and intimidation has stalled the project. Each time a contractor pulls out due to dangerous circumstances, it can take up to a year to complete the process of appointing a new team. This further delays delivery to beneficiaries, some of whom have been waiting for decades for a home. 40 million rand has been allocated to this and three other sites for security. The debriefing of this project once we hand over is to look at an integrated security strategy for housing development where we don't do ad hoc contributions but we actually have a whole of government approach. We can't do it alone. We need our partners in SAPS and the provincial government to work with us um, in order to actually uh, uh, say to the construction mafia, you know what, you're not going to intimidate us as government, you're not going to stop us from delivering uh, to the communities. Ralph started working with the Ayepyeb guys when they allegedly started receiving threats from gangsters for their business operations in Cape Town. The two business partners, Kahiso Sitzet and DJ Somebody, had opened the Ayepyeb Lifestyle Lounge in the Mother City in 2021. Now, Stanfield came on board to provide security. He also brought his wife on board as a general manager. Now, over time, DJ Sambari was killed in November 2022 by an unknown gunman while traveling with his bodyguard to a gig in Johannesburg. Now, after the murder, Kajiso Sitete came out to claim that Stanfield was threatening him and he hijacked the establishment. Now, as a result, Kajiso fled with his family to Dubai in April of 2023. You see, there's a whole conspiracy where some people believe that Stanfield may be involved in the death of DJ Sambari. Hey, but that's a whole other video. Now, as of now, the club is open again and it's been reported that it's owned by the family of the late DJ Somebody or the mother of DJ Somebody and also the mother of Ralph's wife. Now, at the time of this recording, Stanfield is behind bars facing a couple of charges. Now, on the 29th of September, 2023, Stanfield, his wife and three others were arrested. Now, the five accused faced charges of theft of a motor vehicle, common assault, robbery, and fraud. Now, the reason is, Stanfield's wife alleges in her affidavit that the BMW vehicle in the theft charge had been owned by the girlfriend of one of her employees. Now, she further alleges that the couple lived in a house she owns and she paid the deposit on the BMW, and the other woman then financed the balance. Now, Stanfield's wife also claims that the woman's boyfriend stole more than 1 million rands from her business. Now, the state's case implicates all of the accused in stealing that vehicle. And Ralph Stanfield is actually currently uh, on trial for, uh, for that case. Um, but him, he and his wife, Nicole, 
at the moment, they stand accused of, of a different set of charges, although Nicole's also um, implicated in that case. The, the current situation is that um, they allegedly um, basically stole a BMW uh, from a person and also a cell phone. Um, and when the cops uh, arrested him um, and his wife at their Constantia home, uh, they found a illegal or an illicit, allegedly uh, an illegal firearm in a safe, um, a shotgun. So he's also um, stands accused of, of being in possession of a of a shotgun or an illegal weapon. Um, and then also, uh, just to give you one little bit more uh, piece of uh, context around how he he and his wife fit into the greater scheme of things, there's there's been um, allegations recently that um, that uh, Ralph Stanfield are involved in um, basically the, the construction mafia and also um, sort of extortion mafia, nightclub takeovers. Most notably with the nightclub takeovers, recently it was um, Ayep Yep uh, in Cape Town, which they allegedly were placing pressure on and extorting and then eventually uh, took over through a high court um, settlement. Yeah, you see, gangsters are controlling Cape Town by violently muscling in construction sites, running private security companies, stalking business people, and colluding with cops, officials in government, and in private sector as well in the Western Cape. You see, some say the city is not doing enough to prosecute the culprits. Now, at the moment, Nafis Modak is denied bail while he's going through his case, and so is Ralph. We'll just have to keep following these cases to see how they unfold. Otherwise, thank you for watching.